Sutra Word Law Truth Why lie when there are so many ways to tell the truth? And the lie will always come to light. The world is arranged in such a way, especially the modern world, that almost all information is available in the public domain. Therefore, much depends on how the message is framed, while the content becomes secondary. It's rarely beneficial to bluntly state an unpleasant truth it often causes problems for both the subject of the truth and the person who delivers it in an unkind or harsh manner. However, lies in today's world are also quickly exposed. It's now much easier to abandon deception, avoid making grandiose claims of absolute truth, and simply find gentle ways to express harsh truths or withhold information that might be unnecessary for others. In everyday life, we constantly face the choice between truth and lies. Truth is often uncomfortable, complex, and even unbearable, while lies can seem simple and attractive. Despite this, psychologists advise against lying in relationships. Why? Truth gives birth to strength. Psychotherapist Thibaut Maris writes, Remember that your relationships are built on values and trust. Of course, without truth, there is no trust. Truth helps build strong connections and allows relationships to be authentic. According to psychologist Nancy Collier, even an unpleasant truth is better than a lie. If your friend or partner didn't hear you, then it's not your relationship that fails, but the illusion of the relationship you created for yourself. When you speak the truth about your expectations and needs, and receive a response, it helps you understand how real your relationship is. It reveals how much you and your friend or partner are willing to invest in the relationship. At some point, participants in a relationship will tire of deception and half-truths and reveal their true selves. So why waste time pretending? Lies tend to spread very quickly and often reach the person they target, accumulating additional details like a snowball. Every slight inaccuracy can be seen as malicious slander. Moreover, lies always backfire on the one who creates them. For example, in the wild, highly organized animals can detect and punish cheaters who take advantage of help without giving anything in return. Such animals are excluded from the group and denied assistance, especially in small communities, packs or prides because the parasitic behavior of one individual reduces the survival potential of the entire group. Scientists believe that a sense of fairness is genetically embedded in all of us, and we instinctively respond negatively to lies and become alert when we detect signs of deception. It's as if we have an internal lie detector that identifies deceivers, as certain movements and physical cues often give them away. So how can you tell when someone is lying? Hiding the truth where necessary is prudent and unobjectionable, while lying in any case is base and foolish. Philip Dormer Stanhope Chesterfield Truth walks straight, and you cannot dodge it. Truth always prevails. When a person lies, they need to ensure they are being listened to and believed. They will often glance at their listener for feedback. If they think the lie is working, they will relax and continue. If they sense doubt, they will become anxious and start to convince or reassure. It is well known that lying causes stress, and during stress, the body experiences a lack of moisture. The liar will blink more often to moisten their eyes, lick their lips or gums, scratch their nose, or drink water constantly. It can also be useful to track where a person's gaze is directed during a conversation. When someone is fabricating a story, they are engaging their imagination and referring to future scenarios, so their eyes will look up and to the right, rather than down and to the left, which is where we look when recalling actual memories. You can also observe their breathing under stress, it becomes shallower and the person may swallow the ends of their words. 
Lies are not always meant to harm. Often, lying is the result of distrust toward the listener. This can be a sign of laziness and a lack of interest in discussing the matter, or it can reflect a lack of respect, they won't understand anyway, or it might come from poor communication strategies. In any case, lying is easy to avoid. If we trust someone but, for some reason, don't want to tell them everything, wrong time, place, or too many bystanders, we can hint, share part of the truth, or change the subject. The renowned German sociologist and philosopher of the second half of the 20th century, Nicholas Luhmann, one of the founders of social systems theory, considered communication to be the foundation of social life. The basic principle of communication is that a system always achieves its goal by selecting functional substitutes. If communication falls apart due to lies or even overly blunt, uncomfortable truths, it is necessary to find more appropriate words and formulations to achieve the goal of communication. Bury the truth in gold, trample it in the mud, but it will always come to light. Truth is the most valuable thing we possess, let us economize it wisely. Mark Twain What is false is rotten. Truth is a certain way of perceiving and justifying our beliefs, while lies are not only a sign of low opinion of the listener's intellectual capacity but also a sign of insecurity. A confident person always seeks to win others over rather than hide behind falsehoods. The famous German philosopher of the second half of the 19th century, Friedrich Nietzsche, claimed that a self-respecting individual aspiring to become an Ubermensch must always be honest with themselves. The habit of lying to others and deceiving them does not help in this regard. Unfortunately, while society recognizes the value of truth, it often encourages people to lie. For example, children are taught to tell the truth. At first, they comply, but when they are punished for their honesty, they learn that telling the truth isn't advantageous and begin to lie. A child lies out of fear of adults, hoping to delay punishment and conceal wrongdoing. Yet, in this initial, seemingly harmless childlike method of avoiding parental wrath lie the basic problems of adult society conformism, corruption, and crude propaganda. The issue of truth and lies is an important factor in the political life of society and its historical development. Consider the almost instant collapse of the Soviet Union and the global socialist system it led, which disintegrated in just a few years by historical standards. In the mid-1980s, it still seemed that the political structure of the Soviet superpower was solid and stable. Even the economic problems of the socialist economy alone could not have led to its collapse the standard of living for Soviet citizens was quite high, and the nation's military might was undeniable. However, one glaring issue remained the population had stopped believing in the ideology that had governed the country for seven decades. Socialism was declared to be the most advanced and economically progressive system, while the capitalist West was portrayed as decadent. People believed this until they traveled abroad and saw fully stocked stores, cozy homes, and good roads. One traveler would tell ten at home, who would tell a hundred, and so on in geometric progression. As a result, the serious sacrifices and restrictions imposed by the socialist system, censorship, limited international travel, shortages of goods under a militarized economy, etc., began to seem pointless. The faith in socialism collapsed like a house of cards as the gap between government propaganda and reality became too obvious. A grand lie led to a global geopolitical catastrophe. Truth is old but never dies, lies are younger, but they don't live long. Treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. Job 2020 Doing good means boldly speaking the truth. Unlike political ideologies, religions advocate for telling the truth, 
because lies and false testimony corrode not only society but also the souls of individuals. The Gospel of Luke states, For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open, Luke 8 17. Christ said, Blessed are all who do the truth, they shall not perish forever. The path of truth is straight, but the path of falsehood is crooked. Walk the straight path and leave the crooked one behind. The crooked path is uneven, full of stumbling blocks, rocky and thorny, leading to the destruction of those who walk it. But those who follow the straight path walk smoothly without stumbling, because it is neither rocky nor thorny. Even truth should be withheld if it brings misfortune. What is the point of lying if you can achieve the same result by carefully measuring the truth? W. Forster The Sermon on the Mount speaks of those who choose the path of truth, predicting eternal life for them, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 5.10. Saint Basil the Great, 4th century, inspired people to stand for truth, even if you must go against all people or incur disgrace and danger for doing what is right, you should never resolve to distort what is properly known. Of course, a Christian is called to do everything with love for their neighbor, including speaking the truth. One must choose the most appropriate form and time, otherwise if one uses slander, even justly, their truth is filled with falsehood. The Lord, having given many commandments on love, commanded us to seek God's truth, for he knew that truth is the mother of love. The written law, restraining from falsehood through fear, teaches truth, over time, this practice generates a love of truth, leading to a stable disposition toward good, which causes one to forget previous wickedness. But truth must be spoken according to the Lord's words, Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, Matthew 10:16, using wisdom and sincerity to convey what we want to communicate. In Buddhism, all evil deeds originate from unwholesome mental roots. Some are linked to actions, like killing, stealing, or sexual misconduct, while others are connected to thoughts, greed, ill will, and wrong views. Four of these are related to speech, with the most severe being lying, slander, and gossip. These offenses lead to rebirth in lower worlds. If reborn as a human, the karmic consequences of lying include being treated harshly by others, facing false accusations, mistrust, and an unattractive physical appearance. The consequences of slander and gossip include losing friends for no apparent reason. There are not two truths. A truthful word is rarely pleasant, and a pleasant word is rarely truthful. The truth is like a needle you can't hide it in a sack. For Buddhists, there is only one instance where lying may be considered a positive deed when it is done to save a life. If a murderer is seeking a victim and asks for their whereabouts, Misleading them is a noble act that improves one's karma. Judaism is also lenient toward lying, but only if it is to save a life. The Torah says, Keep far from a false matter, Exodus 23 7. While this passage refers to the Jewish court, Beit Din, and false testimony, some commentators believe it applies to all people commanding them to distance themselves from lies and falsehoods. The covenant is broken even if a person distorts only minor details in conversation, turning their words into a mixture of truth and falsehood, or even if what they say merely appears false. However, in some cases, for the sake of good outcomes, it is permissible to adjust the information being shared. For example, in the Babylonian Talmud, Tractate Kitabat, it is discussed how to praise a bride before the groom at a wedding feast. 
The sages of the house of Shammai argue that one can only praise the qualities that the bride actually possesses, as lying is forbidden. The sages of the house of Hillel go further, saying that every bride is beautiful and virtuous, as in the eyes of the groom, she truly is beautiful and virtuous. This is not a lie, but a reflection of the groom's perspective. Jewish sages teach that one should try to say pleasant things to others and praise them for their good qualities, even if they do not yet possess them. Such words awaken and solidify a person's desire to develop these qualities much more quickly. No matter how cunning you are, you cannot outsmart the truth. It's better to hear a bitter truth than a sweet lie. Hold on to the truth, and all good people will hold on to you. It is also permitted to distort certain things or invent stories to comfort someone in a difficult moment. It is allowed to alter information when informing a person about the death of loved ones or other heavy news. It is permissible to take the blame upon oneself to save someone else from disgrace. It is allowed to deceive someone who is trying to deceive us. Deception is also allowed when it concerns matters threatening a person's health, especially when it involves life or death. But these are extreme measures. If there is another way to achieve the goal or if inaccurate information can harm others, one should avoid lying. In Islam, a liar violates Allah's command. They stray from the righteous path and lose Allah's guidance, becoming one of the sinners, they wander in the darkness of ignorance and lose the ability to distinguish truth from falsehood. A servant's faith will not be true until their heart becomes truthful. And the heart will not be true until the servant's tongue is free from lies. The first lie begets the second and third, and over time, it becomes a habit and a way of life. A person continues to lie and persist in lies until they are recorded with Allah as a liar. Wanting to present oneself in a better light among people, such a person violates the prescriptions of the Quran, thereby showing distrust in God. Only those who do not believe in Allah's signs fabricate lies, and they are the liars. Quran 16 The extreme manifestation of lying is hypocrisy, where lofty motives and charitable goals conceal immoral, selfish actions. Hypocrisy is considered one of the gravest sins in Islam, indeed, Allah does not guide the extravagant and lying. Quran 40 28 Speak truthfully and pleasantly, do not say truthful but unpleasant things, and do not say pleasant but untruthful things. Lies are a roundabout way, leading us to truth through the back door. Michel de Montaigne If you speak only the truth, you don't need to remember anything. Mark Twain In folk traditions, the themes of truth and lies often arise, and folk wisdom, embodied in tales and epics, tells us that deceit always backfires on those who attempt to use it for personal gain. In the Afghan tale The Wise Judge, we see how foolish and pitiful a person looks who tries to profit from lies. One young man, traveling to distant lands, entrusted an old man with 100 rupees for safekeeping and left. How much time passed is unknown. But when the young man returned home and asked the old man to return the hundred rupees, the old man answered with a malicious laugh, Your naivety delights the jackals. I did not take any money from you. Go on your way. The young man was confused, but good people advised him, saying, Go to the judge and complain about the cunning old man. And so the young man did. The judge called the old man and asked, Did you take money from the young man sitting before you? The old man wept, fell to his knees, and pleaded, The great Allah sees, I took no money. Will I lie with my grey beard? Then the judge asked the young man, Do you have witnesses? The young man shook his head negatively. All right. And where did you give the old man the money? Under a tree, 
the young man replied. Go to that tree and tell it that I summon it for questioning. Sadly, the young man left for the tree, while the old man, smiling into his beard, waited. Half an hour passed. The judge looked at the son and asked the old man, Has he reached the tree? Not yet, the old man answered humbly. An hour passed. Has he reached the tree now? Asked the judge. Yes, answered the old man. Indeed, indeed, the judge smiled. Finally, the young man returned and sadly said, The tree did not come with me, wise judge. The tree came, honest young man. The judge replied. How did it come? The old man exclaimed. Why did I not see it? Am I blind? To this, the judge answered, You have eyes. But remember, I asked you if the young man had reached the tree, and you said no. The old man nodded. And then I asked if the young man was returning, and you said yes? If you didn't take money under that tree, how could you know where it is and how long it takes to get there? Angrily, the old man spat on the ground, took out one hundred rupees from his pocket, and threw them at the young man's feet. Lies have short legs. Lying is not swift it soon leads astray. Lies won't kill you, but people won't believe you in the future. Truth and lies are complex and ambiguous concepts. We condemn those who lie maliciously, benefiting from the deception of others. Yet, a lie told for the benefit of others, which saves and protects our loved ones, is considered a noble act. In the delicate matter of truth, there are many nuances. Honesty and sincerity are virtues, but bluntness and imposing one's truth can be harmful. Therefore, it is essential to remember that our words are a way to show kindness, care and attention. It's not so much what we say that matters, but how we say it. It is always necessary to find the right moment for a conversation and to carefully formulate what we want to say. If the truth is harsh and unpleasant, we must find the most gentle way to present it. And of course, before we say the truth, let us analyze whether it is indeed true and not a rumor. Truth is a product of perception which is often distorted by our personal experience, perspective and worldview. Therefore, the same fact may be absolute truth for us, but may seem like total falsehood to our interlocutor. Hence, it is so important to choose tactful language and avoid imposing our truth on those who do not wish to know it.